Come on, Chase. Aren't you tired, man? Aren't you tired? Just stop all the appeals, all the shenanigans. Don't worry, your fate will be way less tragic than that of the family you murdered. No one will cause you for the physical pain you cause Joseph or Gianni or Joe Jr. No one is going to beat you or break your jaw the way you beat Summer and broke her jaw, my ex-wife. And I loved her. Even though I couldn't marry her, I loved her once. I'll always love her. How could I not? No one is going to beat you. You'll just slip into unconsciousness. Be brave. Ask for forgiveness from the only entity that can give it to you. And that is God Almighty. I'm sad for you. I'm really sad for your family. Can you guys hear it? I'm or? sad for my family if we met you. He's going to speak. Chase Merritt's going to speak. Other family members have already spoken. I think the fourth one's about to speak. Your Honor, Mr. Uh, Michael Mitch Day would like to address the court. Sure. Oh, I want to hear Mike too. Yeah, he's been vocal the whole time. They made a lot. They've made a lot of comments on how vicious social media has been over the years. So keep that in mind, everybody. Hi, Your Honor. Smith and Detective Steers told me they found the bodies. Excuse me. But the jury has spoken. And even though darkness in this man yeah, he's, he's somebody that was accused a bunch of times, too, by the idiots on social media. my mother bury them so unnatural so unnatural not natural causes there was intent here it's disturbing it was devastating <coughs> my brother had to my, my my nephew had to grow up without a father although he had one heck of a stepdad but not his, his dad there were birthdays, there were Thanksgivings, there were family time, no Christmas, no kids smiling, no more. My own, it didn't just mark me that day. It marked my kids, my bonus kids never got to meet them, my, my adopted kids never got to meet them. You cannot get back time. There's nothing more valuable on this earth than time. And that was stolen from them. Was See, he has months. to act like it's not phasing him because he claims he didn't do it. But all the evidence in the world proves he did it. I never got to meet my lovely wife. This world was robbed of four beautiful souls. My brother was, um, he was, I looked up to my brother, sir, your honor. Um, I'll never get another conversation. Yes, that's his brother. Like my mother said, uh, and like my father said, if I want to go 
speak with them, I have to go to a grave site. No more surfing. No more anything. I was going to read a, um, a song that he wrote to me when I moved to Kauai back in 95. I actually wanted to also play a video. We can do it. Um, I just don't want us to forget what this is all about. It's not even really about us that were left behind to pick up the pieces. It was about those four innocent people. If, if this case was now, and the lives that they it would be the hugest case live, on social media. Never got to live. But and the potential there. And everyone thinks, oh, Chris Watts, Chris Watts. And, and you know, they just only focus in on so, two cases or something. This is, this is the There's a lot of cases out there, everybody. My brother Joseph was, he wrote this song, Brothers Who Follow the Sun, but he, he said sun was S O N, not S U N. He said, Through the same womb brought into this world, beating to a different beat, different flavors swirled. You are my companion to love, to live, to share. Follow me in my footsteps beyond what I would dare. I wouldn't change it for the world. Because you're my only one. Brothers who follow the sun. That's uh, Joseph. I led you down a the, dark road. Or Patrick, excuse me. This is Patrick McStay, the father right there. Leaning in. place of angel shame. Joseph is the one that died. And, and the Mike's talking up, right now. brought us into the light. Freeing us from blindness, grace, restoring sight. This is the kind of person he was. It was this whole this whole thing is a bad deal. <laughs> it's, it's I'm not a gambler, but it's a pretty poor exchange rate. I understand though. Why it's not big, it's because, I mean, Chris Watts is the greatest case in the history of the world. One that's hard I mean, why cover any of these? A man that is the face of evil. He's unrepentant. He lacks a conscience. He's conscious deprived. He's non-apologetic. And he's merciless. He was a lifelong criminal. But I won't waste any more time on him. I, won't, I just want to read one verse, maybe two, from the Bible, if that's okay. One, it's my life, my life first. Actually, my brother showed me one time. He said, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though our outer man is decaying. Our inner man is being renewed day by day. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory, far beyond all comparison, while we look not at the things which are seen. Yep, definitely sarcasm the there, true the crime theater. Is temporal, the unseen is eternal. So I will waste no more time, no more words on this man. He's not worth my time. He's not worth their time. He stole their time. He's, he's not worth it. Just call him a piece of shit like you want to, okay? Verses. First John says, This is the message we heard in him and announced to you. God is light. There's no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. So I walk away from, from this time, Your Honor. Thanks, Shogun Love. Just knowing that I will meet Summer, the boys, Joey again. They're in the great cloud of witnesses. And I know that there's, they've spoken. They've rendered a verdict. I'm asking you not to reduce the sentence. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your comments. Sir, 
Galen mixed day would like to address the board. Sure. McStay, speaking as the wife of Michael McStay, Joey's brother. More importantly, I am an unashamed follower of Jesus, and that's why I stand here today. I'm speaking on what could have been. Loss is not just what was, but what could have been, as you see in the, our wedding picture above. We're missing two that fit right in between purity that aren't there because they weren't there with us. What could have been because of the choice that you, Chase Merritt, made to brutally murder my husband's family, we are forced to now live in the continuous what could have been state of loss. Through marriage, I have a brother-in-law and a sister-in-law and two beautiful nephews, but because of you, Chase, they reside in heaven, not here with us. There's really no possible way to describe the impact, the horrendous, violent crimes, the murders of my family as Mike's life has had on our lives and the lives of all of our family. It's truly indescribable, but I will make an attempt. <coughs> my husband had to propose to me on bended knee in front of a gifted memorial bench for Jimmy, Joey and Summer and Gianni and Cheba that's directly up above the street from our own home. The front of the memorial bench reads, Riding the Waves of Heaven. My husband should have been able to propose to me at that same spot overlooking the surf at sunrise, but then been able to run down those steps at 204s with a board under his arm to go catch waves and share his good news with his big brother two brothers that followed the sun in the light of the sun. Instead, I just had to imagine it that way. There are hundreds if not thousands of what could have been in our life as Joey's sister-in-law. Most every moment of every celebration we have is counteracted with the realization of the loss of Joey, who is not there to share it with. Just like this family picture you're looking at. Everything in our lives from now on is always bittersweet. There's always happiness, always not sadness mixed in with it. Our lives in San Clemente, where Joey lived, worked, and served at the constant reminders of his absence constantly surround us. We can't escape it. Mike lives in the constant what was. They ate together there, they served together, they worked together, they birthday parties with their families together at the park. I walk our Hesquita, Kuma, little bear in honor of Bear on the beach and envision what it would be like to watch our daughter Faith and Joey surfing out front together, their smiles, their long, thick, wavy hair. But then I, I wake up to realize that's never going to happen because you killed him. And you robbed her of knowing her uncle and enjoying her uncle Joey. What about how it impacts my mama's hearts for all of our sons, Caleb, Noah, and Christian? who are all like their cousin Jonah, the surviving son of Joey, in different ways. Handsome, the curly hair, responsible, gifted musically and in photography, intelligent, respectful, insightful, compassionate old souls, which tells me they are like their Uncle Joey, but they have to settle for stories because their Uncle Joey, instead of his presence and influence on their lives, you took from them. My heart breaks for what could have been for our bonus children, Freedom and Ezekiel, who entered America without four family members to greet them and know them and invest in them. They would have had the love and influence from Joey in their auntie summer. This summer when Zeke surfed and paddled out all on his own in the lineup catching waves and how cooling and howdying out loud, it should have been with his two cousins. Instead, it was alone. Gianni and Joey Jr. were not there by his side because you murdered his cousins. Freedom and Faith and Ezekiel also have an eye for sea glass finding that they could have done with the boys right in front of the house on the beach where they lived. 
but you brutally murdered two innocent children instead. What about the other two children, Shekinah and Bella? Shekinah also serves in his athletic, and Marbella Grace, who's athletic, but also shares her Uncle Joey's humor and mischievous side. They only have a handful of memories because they were only six and nine, and you took time away from them and left them with small memories. Or Purity, who is only three and wants to have her own memories to live on, but who mostly speaks of growing up under the perpetual sadness of her dad, who told me at nine years of old, thank you for making my dad smile and laugh again. Maybe this is what he was like before he missed his brother Joey. I am not responsible for the impact your crimes against my bonus children's father family, but I am left with bearing the brunt of trying to navigate it all with them. What impact your violent, cowardly murders had on my husband's family in other ways besides our nine blessings and all the lives that you've ruined and all the could-have-beens we live in in their absence? In the words of my daughter, you've, I've had to carry a burden of pure evil on my shoulders because of someone who murdered your husband's brother. Since being with Mike, it's like you've gone through it every single day with trauma. There's so many days every single year because Joey is so special that many, many, many days correlate to him and his death in some way. The words are a friend that Mike has been in a constant state of loss and grief for an entire decade. In the middle of it all, you stepped into a grieving family, dealt with intolerable pain while trying to put one foot in front of the other and keep it together. You fell in love and got married, but all along there's this huge subterranean pit of grief underlying and affecting your relationship. Being by Mike's side, watching him process grief, absorb the weight of all the pressure, the media, the constant questions when we are out, our last name is mentioned, are you that family, that family that went missing, and then the family that was killed by their own friend, the disruptions of I am sure well-meaning people but who have no boundaries and contact him on family time and holidays because they follow the case on social media and feel that they are our real friends, going on interviews with him and having people bring up horrific details as if it's just a story. But the gruesome and brutal details of the crimes that you committed are his family. It's not just a Netflix documentary to us. The details are shocking and nauseating to sit through. The constant phone calls and questions while we're trying to have what is a quote normal life with our blessings. The pressure in being the only living son. The pressure to continue getting up, showing up, and running his own business to provide and so much more. All of this without his sounding board and Joey. Mike is protected by nature. I've seen the frustration and anger for not being able to protect his family from the, these monstrous acts of violence you did against them. I constantly live in between not knowing what to say, when to say something, and when not to say anything. And it can change depending on the trigger or the memory of Joey. Joey's kindness, his general heart, and his generosity. The loss is just too insurmountable. I can't do it. I can't articulate it. You took what could have been decided to keep the family, but on your actions to let, act like a coward of all cowards by taking your rage out on a 5'4", 110-pound sister-in-law of mine. Summer and I would have loved raising our cousins together. She was strong. She was protective. She loved her man and her boys fiercely. I admire her, and I get that. She also had influence on Joey and was discerning and not easily manipulating. You obviously hated that, Chase. Being exposed to the evil details and pictures of your monstrous and rageful acts of violence against Stummer devastated me as a woman. Being in your presence in this courtroom after these details expose you for the monster you are caused great anxiety for me. I have never been exposed to such an evil person in my presence. And then to go home to my beautiful daughter and have to think about training her in self-defense and exposing her to what kind of people are really out there was a horrible thing to do and live with. You brought evil into our innocent world. I feel bad for the horrendous legacy you have left your own children, burdened with and forever changed by too. God have mercy and grace on them for all of that. Due to the tragedy you inflicted on our family, the duration of the ongoing trial, all the emotional ups and downs, 
the waiting from your delays and postponements on your side, the scheming, the deception, the lies, the evil details, the financial loss and strain on us, the injury to the jury, the payments of needed counseling, frustration of being able to afford the ongoing counseling we need, the unredeemable and undeniable loss of quality family time can never be brought back. Driving to San Bernardino, the juggling of us trying to satisfy and keep our customers running with our own businesses the entire time, you don't care about. I felt like I was drowning in the evil you exposed our lives to. Your lack of character, everything we sat through exposed us. Because of your action to murder my husband's family, the sadness, the pain, the emptiness, the anger, and all of what could have been have impacted us forever. I was robbed of what was supposed to be our joyful newlywed honeymoon stage the last couple of years. We never got a, a honeymoon due to the trials, delays, and postpone, postponements, and so forth. Instead, we found ourselves fighting over our inherited God-given joy, in honor of joy and summer and the boys, to be here at court. We will navigate through the what could have been, the kind of loss with our beloved family members, with the help of the Lord and the loved ones that are willing to mix stay with us through the uncomfortable and unrelatable circumstances you have caused in our lives, knowing that we will see them again in heaven. That is the hope that anchors our soul. However, we did get a vindication day on earth, my husband and I. Mike and I took our little bear with us to the desert where you discarded our family's bodies and thought that you got away with the murders. So much so, that you actually took people back to the shallow graves you put them in, pretending to be grieving, when in fact you were gloating like the sociopath you are. I, can exp I cannot express the emotions of tearing down the crosses and shoveling every stone of remembrance away, dismantling and demolishing every remnant of the continuation of your evil crimes with the support of close friends, all through sweat and tears. It was surreal reading the signs people left behind in honor of our family, saying that justice was finally served for the mixed day family, all the while looking up to see the watchful eye of the infamous tower above that placed you in the desert. There's been vindication, there's been justice, truth prevailed, light overcame darkness. Their voices were heard, they were not silenced. Mike and I released four doves at the site representing the Holy Spirit in the lives of Joey and Summer, the innocence of Gianna, Gianni and Cheba, and the freedom for all four of them, since they are in the presence of God. God help you. Thank you, Emma. I appreciate your comments. Your Honor, there's uh, one remaining, one Jonah McStay. I'd like to address the court. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's from a uh, previous. I often lived in the shadow of losing my father, stepmom, and two little brothers. Sometimes just seeing another boy with their dad reminds me of the tremendous loss I have endured. Because uh, he killed the whole family because the, the kids Despite knew who he was. Through healing, discovering my strength, and persevering. I have strived to live a life these family members would be proud of. I fight each and every day to mend the wounds left by someone who, instead of healing, sought to destroy others. No, he just wrote checks to himself for money to gamble with. Their own personal gain. It is my deepest desire in my own life to not spread pain or suffering, but end the cyclical and often generational hurt it gets passed along as people lie, ignore their responsibilities, and deceive themselves until they are engaged in the kind of evil we have heard about in this courtroom. It has been so powerful to see my family come together and rally behind one another. And I hope people know that with help 
therapy, the God of their understanding and support, even if it's just by one person. They too can heal from horrible situations. Ultimately, I hope to be a father one day. And when I am, I will hold my children close. Closer still because I know what it's like to lose people I love. But I will also hold them close because I now know what it's like to love, cherish, and experience reconciliation in ways I never thought possible. My deepest gratitude to everyone who fought for justice for my family. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your comments. We'll take a uh, 10 minute recess uh, before uh, continuing with the discussion matter. Yeah, so I guess there, I, he he said he wanted to speak, Chase. So I don't know if they're gonna allow him to do that. I think he might be allowed to say something just prior to the sentencing. So we'll see how that goes. But I definitely want to hear that. <laughs> I mean, he's gonna claim how he didn't do it. He's gonna try to make his case again. I've never I've never seen a case that had so much circumstantial evidence. Yeah. It, it's crazy how much circumstantial evidence there is in this uh, case. Um, I mean, his cell phone pinged right where the graves were dug. His uh, phone pinged exactly. I mean, the timing. If you go, you need to go watch the videos that I made where it was before I used my own voice, of, of course. I guess I could, since we have to wait 10 minutes, I could play one of those. Let's see. Well, I mean, here's the playlist I've made. There's just a ton of, there's a ton of videos on it. The main ones are this one right here. Let's see. I think this one's probably No, not that one. That's the fifth. This one right there. So this is the day that they were murdered. They the analysis of February 4th. So I played this the other night, but if you didn't see it, then just watch this, because this is all off of the, um, the uh, what do you call it? The, it was like a court document. I can't remember what the hell, affidavit or something. 2010 starts at 9.51 a.m. And there are a multitude of calls throughout the day, through 5.48 p.m. During that time the defendant's cell phone has contact with two different cell towers that are adjacent to each other in the Rancho Cucamonga area. According to the defendant he and Joseph McStay Sr. met for lunch in Rancho Cucamonga in a Chick-fil-A. Sorry for the loud music and whatnot, but... Between 9.51 and 5.48 there are 16 calls, where Chase Merritt called 949-295-7451. And then 11 times, that number called the number of Chase Merritt. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department identified that number as belonging to Joseph McStay Sr. The defendant received a call from Joseph McStay Sr. at 5.48 p.m. The call lasted approximately 2 minutes and 37 seconds. The next phone activity is at 9.32 p.m. on February 4th. The following is a hypothetical scenario of Chase Merritt's movements between 5.48 and 9.32 based on the cell tower pings, cell phone activity and other elements of the case. The distance from Chase Merritt's house to the home of Joseph McStay is around 70 miles, 
and would take approximately 1 hour and 24 minutes to drive, given the time of day. Assuming Chase left shortly after the 5.48 phone call, Chase would arrive at the mixed day home around 7.15. <laughs> I know, this is worse. It sounds like a robot. I, I don't know, I just didn't think I'd do it. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't use my own voice, to be honest. I started using my own voice during the uh, Delphi case. During this 3 hour and 44 minutes gap, the defendant received six calls that all went to voicemail. According to AT&T, five of the calls came from a number belonging to Catherine Jarvis, Merritt's girlfriend. Those six phone calls did not generate a cell tower. The defendant's phone could have been in airplane mode, could have been out of range of a cell tower or the phone could have been turned off. So that's Chase's vehicle driving right there. <laughs> so this is just my theory way back in the day I mean like years ago at the top I have the clock ticking away That's the Isuzu Trooper in front of him there. There's Chase walking out of the car. With his little cowboy hat on. During the next 20 to 25 minutes the entire Mixtay family was brutally murdered as described by Dr. Chanakar Chanksri, a forensic pathologist who examined the remains. Summer Mixtay had multiple fractures of the jaw, a fracture of the left parietal bone, with hair embedded, two fractures of the right frontal bone, and a fracture of the left frontal bone. I mean... Chase just absolutely went nuts on... Johnny suffered on two fractures of the left parietal bone, four fractures the of the right parietal bone, the fracture to the middle, to the left frontal bone and that fracture of the sagittal suture. She believed that Johnny suffered at least seven blows to the head. Yeah, so Chase just went nuts, even on the kids, with the uh, miniature sledgehammer. Joseph, hammer. Jr. Because of the minimal amount of remains that they recovered, she was unable to determine a cause of death. But based on the breaks in the skull, and the circumstances surrounding the recovery of all of the family's remains, she determined it to be a homicide. Joseph McStay Sr. suffered a fracture of the left parietal and occipital bones, a fracture of the base of his skull, a fracture of the right parietal bone a fracture of the right tibia and the fracture of the anterior third rib. Joseph sustained at least four separate impacts to his skull. The defendant then prepped the bodies. He made sure he had all the cell phones and keys to the vehicles. Chase then backed his truck onto the driveway leading to the garage. He then loaded the bodies into the center of the vehicle, between the compartments. At 7.47 the vehicle, along with the bodies, was moved down the street and parked. Video footage of a vehicle is captured pulling out of the driveway by a neighbor's surveillance camera. The placement of the muffler on the... You know what's weird is how accurate that looks based on even the video at trial looked almost exactly like that. I, I don't, I did, we didn't get to see it prior, but uh, just based on the camera angle, I could see um, using street view, the camera angle, and knowing that you could only see the lower half, I just did a little video and it looked almost identical. 
This vehicle excluded the Isuzu Trooper as being the vehicle captured on the camera. Chase Merritt ambulates back to the home. Chase accesses one of the business's QuickBooks accounts and at 7.59 writes himself a check in the amount of $4,000 to the account Chase Merritt, all lowercase. This is significant because it places Chase at the scene circumstantially. Three days prior, on February 1st, a new vendor account was created for Chase Merritt well, three in days before case, they were killed, in one of the company's QuickBooks accounts. Created a Facebook, there uh, was already yeah. an account for Chase Merritt QuickBooks with account. capital lettering. Chase had written himself unauthorized checks in the days leading up to February 4th to the all lowercase Chase Merritt account. Chase most likely wanted... Yeah, so on uh, Fe February 1st, he made a, a uh, QuickBooks account with his name all in lowercase. And then he wrote himself a whole bunch of unauthorized checks. So, of course, on the day of the 4th, Joey probably had seen those checks and probably fired him for good. You see? Wanted to make sure. Wow, thanks, Karen Kay. Yeah, I mean, I made this video a long time ago and I played it the other night, but I'm just showing it sounds like people don't really have a. It, they're wanting to know what went on here. But this is all based on... Uh, whoa! Got it! Freaked me out again! <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention. Thank you, Gray. This is how I found you. Great work, always. I've never forgotten about this poor family loudly crying face. Hashtag Justice Bomb. Yeah, let me t I'm going to turn the volume up on this so I don't miss it. Anyway. Thanks very much, uh, Karen. That was very cool. All right, this side, let me get back to the... Or Joseph didn't remove this account after their lunch meeting. It was likely about this very subject. Then at 8.05, Chase deleted this check and did not print it, according to QuickBook Records. For the next 20 to 25 minutes, Chase probably did some cleanup. Then at 8.28 p.m., just before leaving, Chase used Joseph's cell phone to call himself, to set up an alibi. Chase's phone was off so did not record the incoming call. Chase then turns off Joseph's cell phone and leaves the house, goes back to his truck, and heads back to the Rancho Cucamonga area. At 9.32 Chase Merritt felt safe to turn his phone on, and noticed that he missed the five calls from Catherine Jarvis. He then dialed Catherine's number, generating a cell tower near Miraloma. This is the last cell activity on the 4th. See that? It was such a perfect timing. It was amazing. You get the QuickBooks, uh, writing the check at the house, and then just a few extra minutes at the house, and then you make the fake phone call from Joseph's phone to your phone, except his phone was off, so it didn't register the incoming call. And then almost exactly, like, I mean, exactly the amount of time it would take to drive from there to Miraloma, he then turns his phone on because he's feeling safe now. I am almost home, you know, I'm a, like, you know, I'm getting close. So he turns his phone back on, and then he receives notification of six missed calls from his uh i think his girlfriend jarvis and then then he missed and then they missed call from joseph all right but it was all sort of alibi stuff the six calls he missed from catherine i you know you know jarvis i guess is her name um i don't know if he if that was intentional or not i think the main one was he, he wanted to have char uh uh, Joseph's phone calling his phone and then he turns his phone back on there but the timing is so perfect what's he doing over here anyways south so it shows that he's heading back up in that direction I mean it literally is so 
the timing of the last call from uh, Joseph's phone to him and then his drive down there. Everything just works so perfectly. It's amazing. Yeah, no, I said that. His phone was off. Well, you know. he, he turned it back on and then she uh, got six notifications from her. Yeah. All right, so it sounds like there, somebody's coming back. Yeah. I would like to say I am so very sorry. Oh, wow. He's talking already? In Joseph's summers. Is this practice? In Joseph Jr.'s family. In Gianni's families of and Mary's and with the tragedy. Jesus, I almost missed it. No mother or dad should have to bear this. Oh, good acting there. The pain of losing mm. their son or daughter. Good stuff. Had all those years to practice it. No brother or sister should be deprived of a lifelong relationship with their sibling. Or a family who lives so much is unmanageable. In this setting, and with the loved one's feelings, feeling that they finally found justice. I'm conflicted in addressing the issues that I have to hear. After hearing your statements and knowing you feel that justice was done here, a part of me wanted to just stay silent. At least for a while. But the thing that is bringing you this sucks. Is ending my life. I can't do it. I can't do it. Ending, ending my life. Oh, poor Chase. Oh. <laughs> I love Joseph. What an idiot. He was a big part of my life. Oh, I'm sure he was. He gave you all the money. I would never have hurt him in any way. I would never raise my hand to a woman or a child. I did not do this thing. Mm. I know you do not believe this. Right, right, right. And that's that kills me. But I believe that if you were to look deep into what has happened here, here in this courtroom, and over the last five years, you'd have to recognize that something, yeah. something is, something's amiss. Remember when you said something, you're sure he, you're the last person wrong. to see him alive? This prosecution team, without any care whatsoever, has used you and others to accomplish their goal. They convinced you. I did this thing. I know that. And honestly, if I lost a son, brother or daughter, grandchildren, to such a cowardly act, and genuinely believed... Well, unless you're being honest, calling yourself a clack coward. Were telling me ...that we have the man that did it, I would like to do as you have. But Miss Blake, Michael, the things you, hope, you told the jury that were untrue, they were not, they weren't unconsequential. They helped me get convicted. I hope someday you can ask yourself, someday, the question, why would the prosecutor just need these false statements from you if they need, indeed had the evidence proving my guilt? What you witnessed throughout this trial Oh, poor, <laughs> poor Chase. I can't feel angry for your participation in my conviction. If I were in your shoes, I might have done the same. I do have, however, have the utmost disdain for the people who put us all in this courtroom. This prosecution team without concern. Thanks, Wildy Doodle. Consequences systematically manipulated the evidence.
Oh yeah, manipulated. Yep. Yep. To unrecognizable and malicious assault, I never would have thought possible. And in doing so, knew the person or people responsible for this heinous act are still free. Well, that's you. All to simply get a win. Dead but you're not free. Trial. I've been a target that moves um, opportunistically when confronted by contra contrary evidence. Like when Mr. Iams stated, I believe the family was not murdered in that house. You'd have to ignore the evidence. Or I believe the family was murdered in the house. And to not believe that, you'd have to or ignore the evidence. And the next day, the following day, Ms. Rodriguez states, we never said they were killed in that house. These prosecutors resorted to inflammatory rhetoric, brought out inadmissible and prejudicial statements in the guise of questions, suborned perjury, misled witnesses, including you, Michael, and you, Susan. <laughs> they did these things to keep persistently before Thanks, the jury curious, Georgia. damage and facts which they knew could not be proven. It'll work for a bit. They knew were false. Then, of course, there's the court who let this misconduct permeate the trial. A judge who was so set on ending the trial advocated his role by telling counsel on both sides he could not stop the trial. And had In trying to drown out trial. his voice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it worked for a bit. I'm going to let the next court deal with it. What is most troubling, however, is the fact that after my penalty phase verdict was read, the judge still had to decide my fate. As to whether I live or die, entered the jury's chambers, with Joseph's and Summer's family and had intimate contact with them. This prior to deciding my fate in the motion for a new trial as a 13th juror. Indeed, the jury room was full of high fives, hugs, and congratulatory remarks. When I was told of this behavior, which included the court as well as prosecutors, it reminded me of a story I once read of a of a photographer oh God. who photographed it was a great story flashing thumbs up behind a pile of their victims as he looked on he said it was so jarring that for a few seconds he took it for a montage but yet there was something <laughs> there was something familiar about that scene. Then he remembered. Oh, God. The last time he had seen a scene like that was in photographs of lynchings. Wow. You're such a victim. I'm sure this is not the first time anyone, anyone or all of these prosecutors have grievously committed fraud upon this and other courts. They are professional liars and, like, and likely have have been for the best, better part of this, their disreputable careers. Your Honor, there are no second acts. Do what is right. Give me the hearing I deserve. I can show you where this trial has failed. Allow me to show the family just what these prosecutors have done. What's happened here is wrong. It's taking me from my family, a family that does not deserve this. I may deserve a lot of things. I don't deserve this. I did not do this. And as God is my witness, I will be back here and I will prove
What the hell is this? Throughout the proceedings, they vigorously presented evidence on all of the issues, and the court has reviewed the evidence, and including the defense evidence. And the court, after reviewing, independently reviewing and weighing all of the evidence that was presented during the trial, uh, reiterates the court finds that in its independent judgment that the uh, verdict of the jury is supported by substantial evidence, and the court sitting as the 13th juror independently weighing and evaluating uh, the evidence. Yeah, I guess they hang out with Scott Peterson. To the same conclusion. Uh, so. That now brings us Ramirez, to you know, those types. of sentencing. No legal cause, though, Mr. Moline, why judgment should not now be pronounced. Your Honor, it's our position that there is still legal cause as to why judgment should not be pronounced. We, as indicated in our, even though the court denied the motion, we still feel that there is, that this court should not be sentencing because there is a bias that was pointed out in our moving papers. Um, so we believe there is a legal cause as to why judgment should not be pronounced by this court. Also, um, we, I was presented with a, um, a judgment of death uh, order uh, by the prosecution. We would object to it in its entirety. Uh, as the court is aware, uh, Governor Newsom on March 13, 2019, declared a moratorium on California's death penalty. In addition, he repealed uh, California's lethal injection protocol, uh, and he immediately closed the execution chamber at San Quentin State Prison. So any orders to the contrary would be contrary to the law. That was an executive order. It was not a, uh, a moratorium. It was that was an executive order. I believe that carries the weight of the uh, the uh, the weight of the law at this at, at least at this particular moment in time. Um, so I would object to any uh, death order that the prosecution submitted. Um, and, all right, well, uh, certainly <laughs> yeah, the okay. governor yeah. has the power to grant the moratorium. The governor will carry out his duties and responsibilities as he sees fit, but he did not change or repeal, nor can he repeal, uh, the statutory provisions providing for the various uh, penalties. Um, so. I will do my duty under the law as it currently exists, and I assume the governor uh, will do his duty as he sees fit, as well. That's the look he had on his face the entire trial. We're certainly aware that uh, council has requested uh, further hearing on the issue of. Uh, the sufficiency of the evidence to the extent that counsel wants to introduce well, the, yeah. new or additional evidence. Well, the judge called himself a 13th juror just a minute ago. <laughs> to show or demonstrate or argue that the. Uh, oh man, did they just cut that off? Jeez. False, yeah. misleading, or out of context. Uh, that is not properly addressed in a motion for new trial. Uh, the motion for new trial is based on review of the evidence in uh, the record. Uh, otherwise, a motion for new trial would, in essence, be a new trial. Uh, so, uh, so the court finds that ruled on those issues, there is no other legal cause. So he's left-handed. Right? Uh, waiver arraignment for sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. All right. No, so Joseph's right leg is For the offense broken. of the first-degree murder of Joseph McStead, pursuant to the uh, jury's verdict of, penalty verdict of life in prison without possibility of parole, court will sentence Mr. Merritt to 
the sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole for the murder of Joseph McStay. But the death penalty for the other three. The jury having found uh, Mr. Merritt guilty of the first degree murder of Summer McStay and the first degree murder of Gianni McStay. There's no heat of passion the on them. The first degree murder of Joseph McStay. Especially Jr. the two kids. And the jury having found the special circumstances of multiple murder to be true as to each of the first degree murders as to Summer, Gianni, and Joseph Jr. And the jury determining the appropriate penalty verdict to be death for the each of the murders of Summer, Gianni, and Joseph Jr. And the court having denied the motion to modify the verdict of death to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. It is therefore the judgment and sentence of this court, which you are ordered to create in a judge, that for the first degree murder of Summer McStay and for the first degree murder of Gianni McStay and the first degree murder of Joseph McStay Jr. That the defendant Charles Merritt be sentenced to death, and that the penalty to be carried out to San Quentin State Prison. Where's the crying now? In a manner then prescribed by law. Uh, he's like, ah, uh, so that didn't work? Ah, uh, shoot. Okay. By this court in a subsequent warrant of execution after the defendant's uh, appeals. Uh, are exhausted. Yeah. Well, if anybody uh, deserves the death penalty in terms of what they did, this guy deserves it. The, regard to the additional findings, court but it doesn't finds fit the. No motor vehicle involved. Court finds no ability of the defendant to re yeah. reverse for. I don't know. Any Let to think about that. The uh, fees or costs. The court does impose the criminal conviction and court security fee and construction fees. Court orders that uh, specimens of the defendant's uh, uh, blood and saliva be submitted and fingerprints and palm prints be submitted. San Marino County. Oh, shit. Now they're going to get me on that other one. Go section 296. That has not already been done. The court will impose restitution fines in the amount of $5,000. Pursuant to Penal Code Sections 1202.4, 1202.45, uh, the restitution fine pursuant to 1202.45 is stayed. Court will also impose actual restitution of $5,000 for the funeral and burial expenses of Joseph McStay, Summer McStay, Gianni McStay, and Joseph McStay Jr. And actual restitution for mental health expenses for uh, Tracy. Yeah, he got the death penalty. They just said it. Did you, did you not hear that? Or? For he got the death penalty for killing Joseph, Gianni, and uh, Summer. Court will also retain jurisdiction as to any additional issues. No matter what, the killing of Johnny and Joseph Jr., he should get the death penalty. You know, Summer and Joseph, you could argue, sort of heat of passion kind of thing. The but killing the kids, I mean, the the what did they ever do? Nothing. Transported to the uh, prison at San Quentin, and the warden of San Quentin is directed to maintain the defendant at San Quentin until such time as the defendant's appeals are... Uh, well, that's probably all they could get. Oh, there you go, 5,000 each. And, uh, it was 5,000 each. The, uh, warrant of execution. I provided it to the court. I she just corrected that part. No, she has And the court at this time will sign in an open court on the record the judgment of death based <coughs> on the jury's verdict and the court's pronouncement of sentence. 
Uh, Your Honor, if the court could just uh, make the following corrections since I've objected to the entire document, but there are inaccuracies, at least on my copy, uh, in case that January 17th, um, after defense counsel stated that there was no legal cause, that's an incorrect statement. It's incorrect as to the date and it's incorrect as to my statement. Are you referring to the probation report? No, I'm referring to the death warrant. Oh. It could be on page three, the second paragraph. Okay. This guy's trying to make up for the other hearing the other day where he was literally, he sounded like he'd never even gone to law school. It was prepared in anticipation of Friday. Okay. Uh, last paragraph on page two, second paragraph on page three. Well, burials only cost a certain amount because people want them to cost more. You know, like you spend more money because you want a certain thing but if you bury somebody in a wooden box uh, you know five thousand you know i think it's i don't know it's just stuff like that doesn't bother me at all I, it, like who, what matters is what he got for a sentence okay he's, he, i don't even know where he's going to get the money he's probably spent it all on uh That face right there, though, is the same face he had when he was arrested. That's his real face. The crying stuff was just really good acting. Or it wasn't even that great. It was... <laughs> Shut the hell up, okay? Every single bit... You even called to get the, fa the QuickBooks account closed. You tried to do it, okay? It didn't work. Why'd you do that? Well, I don't know. I figured, you know, I figured Joseph wanted it closed. I mean, he wasn't alive. I mean, I don't know if he wasn't alive because he was only missing, but the... Uh, eh, shut the hell up. Okay. All right. California Supreme Court is automatic. Uh, the uh, judgment will be forwarded directly to the Supreme Court, which will start your appeal process. The uh, Supreme Court will appoint counsel to represent you on an appeal. He's like, thank uh, God, I don't have this guy anymore. With, oh. you, uh, with regard to your appeal. I believe at this time, Your Honor, the court is also obliged under the government code to inquire whether Mr. Merritt wishes to have habeas counsel appointed. Yeah, I'm on a, the, the sub count slowing down again for some reason. I guess I'm not covering the really cool cases that everybody likes in the media. actual attorney to be appointed, but at least the record to reflect the court has inquired and Mr. Merritt has either accepted or declined the offer of appointment. So, Mr. Mayor, do you wish... I'm, I was only 30 away, 20 away yesterday, and now today it's 27 for some reason. It, like, uh, dropped. Habeas counsel for the purposes of bringing any uh, petition uh, or writ of habeas corpus on your behalf? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, the court will, again, attempt to appoint the... Uh, I forget the title of the habeas... Habeas Corpus Resource Center. Resource Center, yes. Uh, to represent the defendant, Mr. Merritt, in with regard to any habeas petitions. Okay. Uh, and I think that concludes... If there's a need to update his pre-sentence credits, the probation report was dated September 27th. I've updated those to 1904. 1904 actual as of today's date? As of today's date, no conduct credits pursuant to 2933. Right. Uh, record reflect that Mr. Merritt does have 1,904 uh, pre-sentence custody credits as of today's date. That's it. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Who cares? We'll be in recess now.
Man, are they going to... Uh, wh what's the recess for then? They're not coming back, are they? I want to see the handcuffs put on the guy. Alright, forget it. Oh, there he is. Yeah, keep playing though. Oh, he gets to get, he gets to walk out there. Oh, boy. So what's coming up next? Is there more? Uh... They said they're taking a, a recess. Hmm. Yeah, it's in, in some ways it's not good that he got the death penalty because he gets the automatic appeal. Uh, he also is separated from the general population. Right? Yeah. So anyways, that's it everybody. I just wanted you guys to see that. You could watch uh, Chase uh, you know, putting on a little show for everybody there. It was amazing how they the cameraman or whatever it was turned it on right as he started. It was like, oh my god, they almost missed the damn thing. It's crazy. Well, I mean, I don't even know how that worked. It sounded like he just sort of sat down and started talking and nobody was even there. It was weird. All right. So thank you uh, to the uh, Shogun for a new membership and Karen K with the Cat Eye uh, donation. I appreciate that very much. And Curious Georgia for drowning out Chase's voice for just a short period of time. You did your job. Thank you very much. All right. So thanks again, everybody. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there.